Hi everybody, I'm Patty Phillips, the CEO of Women Leaders in College Sports. I'm thrilled to be here today talking with the Deputy Athletic Director at the University of Miami, Jen Strawley, and the Deputy Athletic Director at Georgia Southern, Lisa Sweeney. This is gonna be a fun conversation, deputies. We want all the inside information from you. So um, talk first about as deputies, you know, you are kind of the filters, getting information from the athletic directors. How are you filtering that information that you're getting and, and presenting it to your AD so that they can make the best decisions for the entire department? Jen? Yeah, I think, um, you know, when you think about role, it's about understanding vision, mission, and expectations within your department. And then it's sorting through, um, do you have you know, the best information you can and the time you have it and presenting mm -hmm. that to, you know, the athletic director. And it's often coming with, you know, your thoughts and your opinions and what you think the best outcome is given a situation and being able to talk through that and, you know, put brains together to get to the best outcome in often some, you know, complicated situations. So you are actually, um, when you're presenting the information, are you saying, hey, this are my thoughts, we should go this direction? Or are you just presenting the information for conversation? No, there's definitely, um, you know, I work in an environment where I know that Blake values my opinion. Sure. And so with that, I think it is my responsibility to offer insights and thoughts and, you know, what I think the outcome mm -hmm. should be in a given decision. Um, and then and listen and, and talk through and obviously hear his input. And, and then at the end of the day, um, you know, as the athletic director, he has the ultimate call. And so my job then is to implement whatever uh, final decision we make as a team. Yeah, Lisa, anything to add to that? You know, we, we um, as, a, as a senior staff, I think, um, work really well together in gathering that information to present it to Tom. Mm -hmm. um, and, and much like Jen said, it's, it's getting as much information as possible, filtering through what, what we need to take to him. Um, and then, uh, much like her, I have a voice and he listens to me, to me and, we, and we make decisions and, um, you know, ultimately whatever that decision is, then, it's, then we go out and we uh, implement that as a team and um, I think it's my responsibility to, to, to be the leader of that team as we go out and, and put that into, into action. Well, what about as deputies? You are also obviously high-level leaders on the senior team and there are certain decisions that you have the autonomy to make. How do you go through those processes and, um, you know, and maybe talk a little bit about how you ask your team to manage up to you, getting information to you so that you can make the decisions and then how are you managing up to get that information to your athletic director? For, for us, um, we have three pillars, rings, diplomas, and leaders. And so anytime I'm going to make a decision, I go to those three things. And if, if we um, are, are trying to make a decision on something, is it, is it impacting one of those three areas? Um, is it positively impacting and what's the cost implication of it and, and is it worth, is that cost worth um, what we're going to get out of, of, of that action. So mm -hmm. as, as long as I'm keeping rings, diplomas and leaders in mind when we're making decisions um, and, and moving forward as a, as a department, then, then I feel very comfortable and confident in, in doing that. Um, but that's, those are our pillars and as long as we stick to them, we're good. Yeah. Anything to add? Um, no, no, I mean, I agree with that. I mean, I think a lot of what you do is value-based decision-making. And sure. so who are you as a department? Um, you know, what are our core values, which, you know, we obviously have, and then what is our mission, and then filtering that back through it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the other piece of it is you make the best decision you can with the information you have and the time you have it. Right. And so it is important to make sure you're, um, you know, engaging the right people to get the information you need to make the best decisions you possibly can. Yep. And you both actually happen to be deputies that are overseeing football. And of course, we love that on the women's side. We're seeing a lot more of it now. Um, we didn't see as much uh, several years ago. But talk about the process you have to go through to make those decisions. Number one, as a woman overseeing football, um, but also it's a hugely high profile sport. How are you getting the information you need? And actually, let me go back. How has it changed from the first year that you oversaw football to maybe being several years in? Have you changed in how you manage your oversight of that? Yeah, you know, I think leadership and oversight and management is really about people and relationships and how you interface. And so, um, you know, for me, it's, it is an important relationship you have with, with your football coach and understanding who he is, what his values are, what he's trying to accomplish, and how can I help make his life easier in that process mm -hmm. um, and it's about communication and so football is you know a big entity yeah. within what you're trying to manage and there are a lot of moving parts within that um, and so how do you understand the role that each person plays within that to then lead to the best of your ability mm -hmm. to help find success for the entire program yeah anything to add on that well, I just I mine was gaining trust yeah. um, you know I've, I've only been there for a year and a half now and so um, gaining trust of that coach 
letting him know that, that I'm, I'm here to collaborate with you. I'm, mm -hmm. As Jen said, I'm here to make life a little easier for you. That doesn't mean I always get to say yes, right. um, but, but is there a way that we can find a way around um, when we do have to say no? Is there another option that we can do that might, might satisfy him? And so I think it's just gaining his trust and, and him understanding that um, I'm here to help move him and his program forward. We all want a successful program. Yep. Um, and so uh, gaining that trust, I think, was the biggest thing and just communicating. Mm -hmm. And Lisa, you actually came into the position after being an athletic director. Um, do you think actually being an athletic director to transitioning to a deputy that gave you a different insight that has allowed you to more quickly establish a relationship, possibly with the football coach, but also with other key players on the team? I think so. I think so. Um, you know, when I took over the athletics department at Armstrong State, I took a lot of time listening to people. Um, what are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? And, and I, I think transitioning into that deputy athletic director role where I had different senior administrators I was working with as well as coaches and, and getting to know um, our football coach. Um, that experience I think helped me, uh, helped me navigate that a little bit quicker. Uh, I learned from my pitfalls from being an athletic director in that role and then stepping into this one. And so I think it was very beneficial, but it, it all comes down to communication and, and listening to, to your coaches and your staff and, and, and really um, trying to take what, what, what their concerns are and either try to make them better or, or try to find a way to, to help them understand why we're doing things the way we're doing them. Yeah, that's great. Jen, you have led many, many coaching searches, including the, you know, um, the, the football coach that you all have now. Talk about some of the nuances of uh, how you manage those searches and any of the processes that you go through to get the right people in place. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think it, um, it comes back to, you know, Lisa mentioned trust. I think there's a lot of trust in, in, a, in a process of who's the right fit at a, at a certain time for your program to, um, because obviously it's about coaching and it's about winning, but it's also about the example you're setting for, you know, for the department and for the institution and the visibility of football puts that on a different platform. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I go back to what she said, it really is about trust and it's about how you build those relationships with the coaches to enable us to position our department in the best position to be successful. Yeah. And Lisa, you all had a change shortly after you came on board. And so as a new person in the department, did that change the way you managed that process at all? You know, I obviously had to get up to speed pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I think for us, and, and, and Tom has always been uh, very good at this, is, is making sure that we're providing what those coaches need to be successful. Um, and, and there's a lot of noise, particularly around a football search, and, and your, your fan base and your donors um, um, have a voice and they, they, they use it a lot and, and, and loudly sometimes. And so you have to be able to filter that out and, and go with what you feel is best for your program at that time. And that might be giving that coach a little bit extra time and let's see if we're moving in the direction we want to go and what can we do to help you do that. Um, but ultimately, if, if it's not going in the direction that, that you feel good about for your student athletes and your program and your department, you have to make that call. And it's never an easy one, but um, as long as you, you know, I think give those coaches time, uh, give them the tools they need to be successful, and if, if they just can't make it, it just wasn't a good fit, and, you, and you've got to move on. Yeah. And you both, um, as deputies, for sure, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of in dual roles with a sense overseeing a lot of people in the department, but also part of the strategic decision making and visioning of the department. What are you both seeing now on the horizon in intercollegiate athletics and how are you communicating that and working through some of those? What are some of the major issues that you all are seeing coming around the bend right now? You know, I think for us, um, we're spending a lot of time right now with on the mental health issue side of things, mm -hmm. um, and what can we do? And and um, uh, we're we're through our senior associate athletic director Brandy Klaus, we're really trying to develop a program um, that that has counselors available for our student athletes um, that we can get them to and help them through some of these difficulties. Because I, I just it seems to be getting more and more each year that we're dealing with with those mental health issues and how can we better prepare our student athletes to cope with failure. Um, how how do they how do they come over overcome adversity, um, and sometimes it's just sitting them down with an outside person, a counselor that they can talk to, and so we've worked really hard in that area, and it's something that we're focusing on. And what does that look like in the future for us with a full time staff member, and and how do we build that so that our student athletes um, can be successful in that area as well? Great. 
Any final thoughts, Jen? Yeah, no, I mean, I think obviously, I think performance health and wellness and, mm -hmm. and mental health and just the total student athlete experience and all the components that um, we need to provide for that, um, you know, are essential. And, and then I think it's also just, you know, the vision of, of who we are and what we want to be as, mm -hmm. as intercollegiate athletics and the message of really at the core what we do is about developing young people and not losing sight of that in the process. Um, and it's developing them across the board. It's, you know, you want excellence in athletics, you want excellence in academics, and you want to prepare them for life. And yeah. how do we continue to keep that at the forefront of what we do on a daily basis? Which is great. Well, thank you both. Some of the themes, um, communication is so key, listening and trust, themes that came up through a lot of the conversation, which is obviously great advice. But uh, really enjoyed being here with you all. We're brought to you by Ath Athletic Director U, and we have Jen Strawley from Miami and Lisa Sweeney from Georgia Southern. And uh, thanks so much for being here. Fun thank conversation. you. Thanks, Patty.